Hello, this is part three of the socialization behavior and opinions. This part is focusing on public opinion, so polling. Um, part one, you should find part two. Um, those were a handout and they went over ideology and the various um, differences between conservative and liberal ideology. So now we're gonna focus on um, measuring public opinion. All right, so you need to understand some terminology first. So you have random sample. So when we are measuring public opinion, um, just like any time that, you know, a scientist um, either, you know, in, um, you know, a scientist is, we're going to run, um, a, you know, going to do a poll or do an experiment. You have to know what your population is, like what population you're going to want to apply this data to. Um, and so in the case of political science, you are going to do a poll and this is going to apply to a certain population of people. It could be females, it could be males, it could be um, people that live on the West Coast or East Coast or, the, you know, rural or urban settings. Um, 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 Christian or non-Christian, any of those type of things. So then from that population, you need to come up with a represent a random sample. You want to make sure that every single person, if it's truly random, every person has a chance to be selected for this, um, this public opinion poll. Okay an equal chance of getting selected. That's going to ensure that, um, it's one way to limit bias in the results. You also want to try to strive to make sure it's a representative sample. So if you're trying to apply this to the, um, you know, the population of a whole state, then you, within your sample, you want to make sure that you're representing this state, the population of the state equally. So if you have 16% are green, um, then you want to make sure that your representative sample is somewhat close to that. Or if not, then you have like that will kind of need to be something addressed when the data is discussed and dissected and explained. Um, sample size. Um, to run a qualified public opinion poll, you need about 1,500 to 2,000 responses. And you can, if you've made it sure that it's a random sample and you've ensured that it's a representative sample, you then can um, push this, um, your data out and have it applied to the population as a whole. So you do need to be aware of a sampling error. You want your sampling error to be um, plus minus five or less. It's preferred to have it at plus minus three, um, which means that the data, if you say, you know, Billy Bob, um, you know, based on the polling data, 60% of registered voters are going to vote for Billy Bob and 40% are going to vote for Charlie, then, and the sample size or the sampling error is plus minus three, that means that Billy Bob could actual numbers are going to end up somewhere between 63 and 57 and Charlie is going to ram somewhere between 43 and 37 depending on the, the the air going both ways okay so anything really over five um it, it's difficult so um you might get a question on the exam um either multiple choice or in, or in an frq um, that gives us data that talks about a same, like the, you know, the poll results show that Sally has, you know, 52 percent of, you know, registered voters are going to vote for them, vote for Sally, and 48 um, percent are going to vote for Charlie. But your sampling error is plus minus three, okay? The, then you have to essentially say that they're tied because if you take Sally down three and you move Charlie up three, then, you know, it reverses who's technically in the lead. So in that case, it's a tie. It's too close to call. Um, and that's the reason we need to pay attention to sampling error when we deal with polling. Okay, methodology. How are we going to collect this data? Um, there's, you know, various ways. The most... Um, um, the most, oops, um, the most common method to collect it is using what's called random digit dialing. So basically it's a phone number. It's a, it's a computer program that just calls a bunch of phone numbers, but they can only call landlines, which is what leads to 
um, heirs. Okay, um, in that because um, you can only tile landlines. Well, there's a lot of people in in this country that no longer have landlines, um, and. On top of that, you have a lot of people that do not answer their phone if they don't know who it is. Um, even if they know who it is, may not answer. So those are the problems with public, that's one of the big problems with the public opinion poll. Um, polarization also plays a role. Um, people not reluctant to give, you know, answer the questions of who they're gonna vote for if they think that it might, you know, they might have some backlash, even though it, if the data is correctly collected properly, it should be very difficult to near impossible to figure out who actually supplied the data to the questions. Um, so, um, okay, so you do need to be aware. So if you wanna use cell phones, then you have to um, actually hire somebody to like punch the numbers in and call them all. So it's more expensive to run a poll like that and campaigns are running polls frequently like all the time they're doing their own internal data their own internal internal polling um to see how their message is hitting is it hitting one place but not the other how do we tweak it how do we adjust it those sorts of things another problem with public opinion polls you could have leading questions um leading them to the answer that you are looking for um, which is not what you want to do um so it, it's not being neutral or you're you're giving them too little of options you might just be like agree and disagree um excuse me but they might be um you know there may be some nuance they somewhat agree but not fully agree so that also it leads to problems um, lack of attention to scientific polling. So not collecting the data properly, not setting it up. So, um, knowing who's answering the questions is, um, you know, is, is done correctly. Um, not collecting data on your people that like on the people that are answering the poll. Um, all of that leads to, um, that that's a lack of attention to the scientific polling situation. So other measures that we have. So you need to understand what a straw poll is. A straw poll is just who's in the lead, who is, um, you know, who won. Um, it's very unscientific. It, it might be like on, um, I know when Trump was running for president in 2016, um, after one of the debates with um, Hillary Clinton, he, you know, he's on Twitter talking about how the American conservative um, dot org um had him winning the debate well when you went and looked at that poll it was like who won the debate donald trump hillary clinton and you just clicked one of them no data was collected um you could take it more and more in time like multiple times therefore that's a straw poll because it's very unscientific it could also be that i'm just walking around a state fair or in um, the mall just collecting random data so therefore I'm not getting a representative sample I'm not getting a random sample those sorts of things an exit poll this is done people are asked who they voted for in various races um, when they leave the polling place when they leave their voting precinct um, and this is just one way that media outlets oftentimes can identify who's going to lead, like to win the race, to call it, or to at least put the initial numbers up of, um, you know, they have ways to do all sorts of stats on this information. But candidates also um, will be following and tracking exit polling data as well um, to see how they are doing um, in the polls you know, and see if they're on track and doing what they're supposed to be doing or if there's some surprises. Um, focus groups. So these are individuals that get selected um, to come in and like, or get phone call, like get a telephone call, get in contact with, or come in and ask questions um, on how they perceived a campaign ad or a debate. They might do focus groups for a debate um, and, you know, and then, you know, media outlets will then talk to them and whatnot. Data is collected off of them. How did the message resonate? How did, you know, how did the optics look? How did the candidate sound to you? Um, this is something that, you know, President Nixon probably should have done when he was running against JFK because um, he did not do well in the first televised television debate. 
um, benchmark and tracking poll. So this is a ongoing poll to see how the message of the candidate or the message of the issue is tracking with the American people. Um, and it is a continuous one. It might ask them every day for a week. It might ask them once a week for two months. Um, and just to see how the message, um, you know, various messages are um, tracking, how do they feel about it, and so forth and so on. Polls will always tell you um, when they were asked, during what time periods, and like how they collected their data. Um, you have a bellwether district. So you need to understand a bellwether district is a district within a state that is not consistent in how they vote. Um, you know, one election they vote on the Democratic side. The next election they might go Republican. Um, they swing back and forth like a bell. This is a district within a state. It's not a state itself. Um, bellwether districts are used or talked about when we talk congressional districts. Um, but it might be used when discussing how a presidential candidate might need to do. Oh, they've got to get this one certain district to swing their way. Um, and then therefore that one district will swing the whole state their way. You have a push poll. Push polls are this idea that um, you're going to push the people to the answer you want. So should Congress and the Supreme Court put, pre, protect smut peddlers who are sh giving our children pornography? That is a push pull because of course, parents are gonna be all like, oh my God, no, I don't want my children to be exposed to pornography at age five. But you're pushing them to that end because if you ask them the question differently, should freedom of speech be limited? they're probably going to give you a much different answer. But what that question about pornography and, you know, smut peddlers is asking is, should we limit freedom of speech? And most people, when you ask them, should we limit freedom of speech? That's the, a no answer. But to protect the children from pornography, a lot of people will say yes, but it's the same thing. So you're pushing them. And then when you release the data, you say they want freedom of speech released. They are protected or restricted. You know, like it, you're going to then skew the data um, and the story that you promote um, or they promote with that data. All right, that wraps up a public opinion polls. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, again, um, parts one and three have been recorded. Part two was a handout. You have those already. Um, read through that handout and see if you have any questions. Um, anyway, next time. See you next time, guys. Bye.